when I look at NASA and the entire effort of flying in space for astronauts and, and the builders of the, the space station, I'm overwhelmed each time by the unbelievable amount of uh, effort it takes from people around the planet to make our space station what it is. Every time I've flown, I get an increased appreciation for how many people are involved with this whole effort. Uh, especially now, as a commander, you, you see what it takes on the ground and around the country and actually around the world now. With the launch of STS-123 and an international crew of seven astronauts, the Space Shuttle's mission to the International Space Station will truly be a global endeavor. The flight of Endeavour marks the 25th shuttle mission to the space station and will be the first time that components from all of the international space agencies will be on board the complex. Endeavour's commander is Don Gorey, a native of Lake Charles, Louisiana, who is making his fourth flight aboard the shuttle. His last mission was as commander of STS-108 in 2001. Air Force Colonel Greg Johnson will make his first voyage into space as the pilot of Endeavour. Johnson, who has advanced degrees from Columbia and the University of Texas, will operate the shuttle robotic arm and assist during rendezvous and docking once the shuttle reaches the space station. Mission Specialist Rick Linehan hails from Lowell, Massachusetts and enjoys outdoor activities and natural history. Linehan, who has flown in space three times, is a veterinarian who has logged over 43 days on orbit, including his last flight, a mission to service the Hubble Space Telescope. An experienced spacewalker, Linehan will venture outside the shuttle for three of the mission's five planned spacewalks. Air Force Major Bob Bankin is a Missouri native who is making his first flight into space. Bankin, who has a Ph.D. in mechanical engineering from the California Institute of Technology, will operate both the space station and space shuttle robotic arms and make three spacewalks during the mission. While growing up in the small town of Wadsworth, Ohio, mission specialist Mike Foreman always knew he wanted to be an astronaut. This will be his first mission, and he too will conduct three spacewalks. The crew of Endeavour includes Japanese astronaut Takao Doi, who has flown in space once before as a mission specialist aboard shuttle mission STS-87. During that mission, he became the first Japanese astronaut to conduct a spacewalk. One of the major objectives of the mission will be the exchange of Expedition 16 crew members. Flight engineer Garrett Reisman, who received his doctorate in mechanical engineering while attending Caltech, will make his first flight into space and will remain aboard the station when Endeavour departs. Endeavour will bring home European Space Agency astronaut Leopold Eihartz, who has been a resident on the station since STS-122 delivered the Columbus Laboratory module. The mission of STS-123 will be one of the longest scheduled shuttle flights in history. It will span 16 days and include five spacewalks and complex robotics work. The highlight of the mission will be the delivery of the first piece of the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency laboratory named Kibo, the Japanese word for hope. That first section is a 14-foot diameter pressurized compartment that will hold experiments, avionics, and other gear. Called the Japanese Experiment Logistics Module Pressurized Section, it is one of three major parts of the Japanese laboratory complex that will be delivered and installed on the station during the next several missions. Endeavour and her crew will also deliver a key Canadian Space Agency contribution to the station, the most intricate robotics to be launched into space so far, a multi-armed robot called Dexter. On this flight, I can't imagine a more exciting series of events. Uh, I haven't flown with this kind of mission before. With this many spacewalks and this many robotics operations, it's really an, an exciting flight to be a part of. The robotic operations will begin on flight day two as Gorey, Johnson, and Doy use the orbiter boom sensor system to survey the shuttle's exterior surfaces to ensure that there is no damage to the heat shielding tiles. The Japanese logistics module, the first section of Kibo, will be moved from Endeavour to the station on day four of the flight. 
It will be attached to a temporary location at the top of the station's Harmony module, awaiting delivery of the main Kibo lab, also called the Japanese pressurized module, on STS-124. After a series of safety checks, DOI will enter the logistics module, Japan's first space station facility. After the work with the logistics module is done during the first spacewalk, Rick Linehan and Garrett Reisman will begin assembling Dexter, a task that will span several days and multiple spacewalks. Dexter is an essential tool for maintaining and servicing the space station. With its dual arm design and twin video cameras, Dexter will be used to remove and replace smaller components on the station's exterior where precise handling is required. Dexter is very anthropomorphic. It's got a body, it's got two arms, two hands, uh, it, could, it could pivot at the waist, and it's got two cameras which are almost uh, kind of like two sets, two eyes. Uh, so you could think of it as uh, almost like a human being. The mission's fourth spacewalk will be dedicated to testing a shuttle heat shield repair technique. The astronauts will test a caulk gun-like device that can be used to apply a repair material into a damaged section of tile to make it safe for a return to Earth. Testing the technique in space is critical to ensure that it is available, if needed, on future space shuttle missions. On the final spacewalk, Bankin and Foreman will relocate the orbiter boom sensor system they use to inspect the shuttle's heat shield. The boom will be stowed on the outside of the station and not brought back to Earth by Endeavour. The Kibo Laboratory, to be launched aboard the shuttle Discovery on the next mission, is so large that the boom cannot fit in its usual cradle along the edge of Discovery's payload bay. Discovery will retrieve the boom once it arrives at the station, use it to inspect its heat shield, and return the boom to Earth. This mission marks the culmination of years of work by people around the world to design, construct, and launch the Kibo logistics module and the Dexter robotic system. One of the really interesting things about this module is that uh, when it actually arrives, it will be, you know, mark the first time that we're really going to be operating both in Japan and in Germany for uh, ESA and in Russia and also with the Canadian hardware. So this will be the first time that we really have the entire international um, co uh, conglomerate come together and actually operate the space station together. I started working with the Japanese Space Agency uh, more than 20 years ago. At that time, the Japanese station module uh, project uh, started. So um, it has taken so many people and uh, uh, so much hard work to come to this point and I'm very happy uh, being uh, a part of this project from the beginning. It is almost uh, the realization of the dream I have had since uh, I became an astronaut.